Alrighty, welcome back to another War Thunder video from some random small YouTuber you've never heard of. Uh, so basically I'm going to introduce myself here because y'all don't know who the hell I am. Uh, my name is Old School 22 I've been playing War Thunder for well over four years now. Uh, I got my account in November 30th of 2014, and I've got over 4,000 hours logged on to Steam. Now keep in mind, this is I had a couple of months ahead where I didn't have Steam, but I still played the game, so it's like more like around 4,100 or 4,200, I guess. It's somewhere around there. Um, throughout the years, I've gotten pretty much most of the vehicles in-game, with the exception of the newer stuff and the ships. So my account is now worth several thousand dollars, if you wanted to try it in GE everything that I have. Um, but the astonishing thing is, with all that time and effort, I still don't have everything. Even with the massive amount of premium time I have, which is sitting around like 426 days right now. I still don't have everything. My highest crew level is on my Abrams, and that's only at 117. With the crew slot right next to it being like in the hundreds to range. So it's really kind of heartbreaking, you know. Four years, 4,000 hours, and I still don't have everything. That's really how grindy this game is, I guess. Gotta play it to grind it. Alright, so getting into the meat of the subject here is the parts and FB shitstorm going on right now. Like, everyone's just losing their shit for it. And really, my ideas for this have been around for well over a year now. I've, I've made a forum post literally a year ago detailing most of the exact same things that people are wanting nowadays. Or at least now voicing their opinions on it nowadays into this you know, just storm. So basically, my main idea here is, uh, without the part parts upgrade, the tank can still repair minor damage. You know, like your cannon barrel gets yellow or light orange, but you can't repair serious damage, such as a dark red or a black. That you have to go back to the the cap circle. Um. Another way of doing that, I've heard other people say it quite often, is without the parts upgrade, repair time is just extremely long. And I'm okay with that. I would def It's definitely better than not having it at all. Um, I believe Fly had something like, like part charges, similar to FBE, where he had like two charges for FBE, where he wanted like one charge for parts, and that was it. I don't really like that idea, because there are many cases where you need to repair more than once just to get out of a sticky spot. Like your hole down and your cannon barrel gets knocked out and the cap circle is way over there and you gotta make it over there to repair and get your repair charge back. But in order to get over there you got you get hit again like three times. Now miracle they still set you on fire but you still gotta repair all that. So my upgrade my idea for the parts upgrade is you can repair all the tank damage with the parts upgrade, but taking into effect the repair time, which a lot of people are going for, your repair time is extremely long, like four time, like three to four times as long than, it, than it'll be without the parts upgrade. So with the parts upgrade, the repair time is reduced. That's basically what it is. Um, FPE, currently you only get two charges of FPE when you research the module. My idea here is to, without the FPE module, you can have one FPE, so it's like your get out of jail card when you're stuck. But also, you cannot resupply it at a cap zone. Because my idea for this is with the FPE module, you can get two charges of FPE, like you normally do, and you can resupply it at a cap zone, like ammunition. So that's even more incentive to get the FPE and play the objective. Because if you're defending the objective, keeping your FPE, that helps your team to win the match. Because, hey, playing the objective. That's what the game is supposed to do. Even though most people, and myself included, just treat it as a death match, there are capture zones to, to capture. And they are quite useful. Uh, moving on to crew replenishment. This is something I haven't heard a lot of people talk about lately. Um, currently, if you have the crew replenishment, you can only get one crew member, and that's it for that tank. Uh, my idea here is 
you can re you can replace the crew all the way kind of like with ammunition or the fire protection I was talking about earlier so like if you have a tank with five crew members and you lose three of them you can get those three guys back into the tank you can basically become fully operational again with all your fire protection all your crew and all your ammo and I think it's a great idea especially for like if you're just a, having a game where you can't kill me I cannot die just one of those games where I'm invincible um, also bring back the last man standing now before y'all like shit on me because that was a terrible idea way back when the last man standing will only be applied for tanks with two crew with one or two crew because I believe there's like one or two French tanks with like one crew member as crazy as it is but really for one to two crew member tanks because those tanks really need it. I mean, it's not fun getting one shot just because your tank only has two crew, like the M50 Antos. Like you machine, like you machine, you can machine gun that thing, and it's just dead. So, in terms of killing those tanks, it's really no big deal because odds are your shot's going to take out both crew members anyway. Um, why not with three crew members? Well, because those tanks oftentimes can also be applied to modern main battle tanks such as the T-64 or the Type 90 and that's going to really piss people off so I'm just going to keep it with the two or below the crew members um, let's see ships those, those definitely need the parts and FPE stock because I've never heard of a battle where a ship just like burned itself down or couldn't repair minor damage that it had taken I mean, obviously, for like a severe fire, the ship is going to go down anyway because they crews physically can't fight that fire and they abandon ship, or they have like several torpedo holes inside of a destroyer and it's just no use to fight it. But an aircraft carrier is a great example here because they're designed to take all the damage. And there's a couple of cases like with the Enterprise or the Lexington, where they're so severely damaged they've like lost half their flight deck because it got blown up and they're listing to the side and they could still like float away being towed back to harbor but the main idea here is the ships need the fire protection and the FP fire protection FP, I said the twice parts and FP stock uh, moving on in terms of the SL and RP reward for tanks like the modifiers itself Early tiers, like tier 1, 2, and 3, they're fine. You can get through those tanks relatively quickly nowadays. It's really around tier 4 and, and up that you really need to double the RP and Silver Lines modifier. Because it should not take forever to grind and grind and grind. Just basic upgrades like parts or FBE on a top tier battle tank. Hell, top tier SPA, that takes forever because SPA, with the couple of exceptions, are really useless versus tanks. And even those ta those SPA that are good versus tanks, they have to be side on at close range. I'm, I'm looking at you, ZSU 57 and the Gepard and the, uh, what's it call it? Yeah, French AA, I forget what it's called. Um, also, I have a unique idea where it's basically like another tech tree, but it's for ammunition on tanks. And it'd basically be like a mini tech tree or a mini folder where you can research the different ammo types and never have to research that ammo type again. So, like, let's say you have a 75mm gun on a Sherman. Once you get all the ammo on that, on that gun researched, you can apply the ammo to all the other tanks in that tech tree with the 75mm gun. And I should have a video playing showing that right now but to help you visualize. So that, that's my spiel for right now. That's my ideas. In the comments, comment down below if you agree, if you disagree, if you think my audio sucks and I need to buy another microphone. <laughs> this is a cheap microphone so I don't know how my voice sounds. 
but just let me know. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for having an open discussion. I'm really liking how the community is pushing Gaijin to have these things, which they should have had for the past couple of years now since tanks were released. And I hope to see you guys on the battlefield. Have a good day.